This is Math 141, and we're going to talk about Section 11.1, uh, Parabolas. And uh, you, you know some stuff about parabolas already. We're going to take a little bit of a different approach to it. Um, first off, I want to start with, with another uh, locus of points definition, so a collection of points definition for a parabola. And I'll write it and then talk about it. So our locus of points definition for a parabola is uh, the set of all points in a plane, so it's two-dimensional, that are equidistant from a fixed point and a fixed line. So we have some fixed point and some fixed line. And then what we do is we, we do some measurements and we find this collection of points where this distance is the same as this distance. And we just get them all, get them all on here. And as we trace it out, what happens is we actually get a parabola. And uh, the fixed point, that's this right here, that's called the focus. So it has a single focus. And then the fixed line, that's this right here, that's called the directrix. Directrix. So notice the focus and the directrix, they're not part of the parabola. The, you know, the parabola is what we're used to, the shape. But they, they help us define the actual shape. So on, on any, any parabola, if I pick some point, this distance right here is the same as that distance right there. If I, you know, if I've drawn it well, that sort of thing. So there's one definition for, for parabolas. And parabolas actually have a, a lot of a lot of use. So if you have some parabola, some that's parabolic, and you know where its focus is, um, the shape of the parabola is such that anything that that comes into the parabola, like light or or something, would bounce off the edge and go through the focus, no matter where it where it comes in from. So if it hits it here, it's going to bounce to the focus. Or if it hits it here, it's going to bounce just to the focus. So that's a, that's a really interesting trait for, for parabolas. So some, um, well, reflective telescopes have a parabolic mirror at the bottom of them. You know, they're these long, long shapes. And this is a parabola, uh, a mirror that's a parabola at the bottom. And the focus is somewhere up here. And what happens is all the light comes in, bounces off the parabola, and then goes to that focus. And then there's a little mirror here that then shoots it out to where the eyepiece is. So all this light that's coming in gets concentrated onto that one spot, and that's why you can get the magnification for it and the clarity. Um, if you've ever seen a solar cooker, solar cookers are roughly parabolic, uh, parabola shaped, and where you put the food to cook it is where the focus would be for that. Um, so parabolas are have a lot of use, and actually if you, uh, I think direct TV, little direct TV, uh, they look like antennas things. They're like this. Well, they're a plate. They're picking up all the symbols and they're concentrating them onto the, onto the focus. We've seen those. <clears throat> so um, there's another piece I want to throw in here for the, for the parabola is this distance straight across the focus to the edges. That is called the focal diameter. So that is uh, it's just another piece. So you have a focus, you have the directrix. All right, did I, I guess I erased that. And then also uh, this point right here, you already know this is called the vertex. This, this point where it changes direction from going down to going up, uh, the point that is uh, that minimizes that, that distance between uh, the focus and the Vertex and the vertex and the directrix. So an equation, a way that we can write equations for these um, would be x squared equals 4p times y. Now that p right there, that's going to tell us um, some things about the shape, the actual shape of it. And so p is a, it's a parameter. 
So for instance, I could have an example where uh, x squared equals 8y. That's a parabola, one of, one of the two things is squared, x or y. And um, notice that's an 8. So if 4p equals 8, then p equals 2. Now here's what p is. p is the distance from the vertex to the focus or from the vertex to the directrix. So if I wanted to sketch a graph of this, um, that's what my, my vertex is going to be at 0, 0. And p is the distance from the vertex to the focus. So that means that uh, in this case, p is 2, because 4 times 2 is 8. So 1, 2. So my focus then, my, my vertex is at 0, 0. My focus would be at the point 0, 2. And then the uh, parabola wraps around the focus like that. Now there's one other uh, piece about uh, this, this multiplier out here, this, this 8, 8 times y when p is 2 that I find interesting, and that's that that value is actually the, the measure of the focal diameter. Like that dotted line there is a long. So this distance from here to here is four, this distance from here to here is four. So that's really pretty telling and actually pretty pretty straightforward to graph. Uh, I'm gonna do another, another one here. I could say uh, y squared equals negative 12 x. So notice in this case, um, y is squared instead of x. So when x is squared, I have a parabola that's going up or down. When y is squared, it's going to be a parabola that's on its side. It's going left to right or right to left. So let me figure out what that p value is. Um, 4p, it's always 4p, equals negative 12. And a little division would tell me that p is negative 3. So that means that uh, my one, my vertex at zero, zero. This negative three means the distance from the vertex to the focus is negative three. And it's in the y direction since y is squared. So that would go back three like this. Here's the point negative three, zero. And my parabola wraps around it like that. And I also know that this distance right here is half of that so this is six and there's a good sketch of that so i have x squared and y squared pretty simple to graph once i once i realize what p uh, stands for and i keep track of what part is squared if x is squared it's going to go up or down depending on if uh, if this value is positive or negative if y squared it's going to go left or right depending on if my p value um, is positive or negative and that affects then this value my my focal diameter length. All right, so why 4p? Well, I'm going to show you. So I'm going to start with just what I'm going to call a, a general parabola. I don't know anything specific about it except it has its vertex at zero, zero. And uh, I know then that in this case, like this distance here is P and this distance here is, is P as well. Like going this way, it's negative P. Going this way, it's positive P. So this would be the point zero P. This directrix would be at the line Y equals not P, but negative P. So I'm just going to pick uh, a point that's arbitrary on that parabola and I'm going to call that point X, Y. What I'm doing right now is deriving this formula. This is not something I, I will ask you to, uh, to replicate on an assessment or anything, but I want you to see where the 4p comes from. I also want you to see the, the tool that we use here because um, it's kind of similar to circles, which I don't know if you would guess that or not. So here's one thing that um, by definition, the distance of this line right here should be the same as the distance of that line right there. Now I know I didn't draw it well, but We'll go with it. Um, so what I'd like to do is actually figure out how long those lines are. And then I can set them equal to each other. 
So first off, let's remember that x is this direction and y is this direction. So if I wanted to find the, uh, the length of this line right here, notice x doesn't change at all. There's no left-right movement. So this starts up here at a height of y, and it gets down to a height of negative p. So this total distance right here would be y plus p. Hope you buy that, all right? This, this, uh, this is y long, this is p long, so the distance of that whole line must be y plus p. All right, now this part right here that's in red, uh, I'm gonna lift, lift that out a little bit and do a little bit of, uh, of side work with it. So here it is right here. One of my points is zero p, the other point is x, y. And I want to know how long how long that is right there. Again, this is this right here, just pulled out so I have a little space. Now, if I want to know how long this line is, what I can do is I can use Pythagorean theorem. I could come straight across, come straight down, and I know that this side squared plus that side squared would be that hypotenuse. So let me think about how long these are. This direction right here is just a change in x. So it goes from zero to x. So that distance is x long. This distance right here, the up down one, goes from p to y, right? It's just a change in y. So if this is p high, this is y high. So it must be y minus p. You know, just like if this was five and this was three, that distance would be two, right? Five minus three is two. So same idea, except I'm just gonna use the variables uh, y, this height, minus this height, this p, y minus p. So that means that if I use Pythagorean theorem, this must be, well, it squared would be x squared plus uh, y minus p squared. And I'm gonna square root that because it's Pythagorean theorem, right? X, uh, this squared plus that squared equals that squared. So if I square root that, that's that. So again, remember my claim. My claim was that this length right here must equal that length right there. That's by definition of, of, a, uh, of a parabola. So let me, uh, let me set that up. That means that that tilted line must equal that height. All right, and I've got X's, I've got Y's, I've got some P's involved. So let me clean this up. I'll do a little bit of algebra. First thing I'll do is I'll square both sides. I have to get rid of that square root. And so on the left-hand side, square root squared is, well, just whatever was in there. And then this is uh, Y plus P squared. And now I'm gonna square, uh, square both of these, square this and square this. And remember when I square something like y plus p squared, that means times itself. So that's y plus p times y plus p. So I'd have to multiply it out all the way. I'm going to have a middle term. So this becomes y squared plus 2yp uh, plus p squared. And I might write this as 2py equals, this is an x squared, plus, and if I multiply this out, same idea, it's time itself, so it'd be y squared minus uh, 2py plus p squared. And now it's kind of a mess. So, you know, I'm looking for this formula, so I'm going to get that x squared all alone. So subtract y squared from both sides. Add 2py to both sides. And subtract p squared from both square sides. Again, I'm, I'm just getting x squared all alone. And notice what happens then. I have x squared equals, um, well, y squared minus y squared is 0. So the y squareds are gone. Uh, 2py plus 2py is 4py. There's my 4p. p squared minus p squared is 0. And there it is, just by definition, just by knowing that this line must be the same distance as that line. And using the Pythagorean theorem, I get a parabola. I get my general equation for a parabola.
Lovely. That is so good. So let's uh, let's do a couple sketches. Let's say that uh, x squared is equal to negative 20y. Well, x is squared, so I know it's going to go up or down. This is negative, so I know it's going to go down. My vertex is at 0, 0. So 4p equals negative 20. So I could divide by 4. p must equal negative 5. So that means my vertex is this way. I'm sorry, not my vertex, my focus at the point 0, negative 5. And the parabola just wraps around it. So that's really poorly drawn. And I also know that this distance right here would be 10. Or if I had uh, y squared equals 1 8 x. Well, uh, y squared, so I know it's going to be a parabola on its side. 1 8 4p equals 1 8. So if I wanted to figure out what p was, I, I would divide both sides by 4, which is the same as multiplying by 1 4th. So p equals 1 over 1632, 132nd. So my p value is 132nd, positive. So 0, 0, there's my uh, vertex. And it's y, so it's positive direction this way. So it goes over 132nd. So my point would be 132nd, 0, right? Just add 132nd to 0. Parabola wraps around there. And I am good. Um, it could be that my equation doesn't come in a real convenient form. So for example, maybe I'm given something like uh, y squared plus 8x equals 0. And I need to graph it. Now notice my form is something squared equals 4p times the other thing. So it could be in this form or it could be in this form. y squared equals 4p times x. That'll be on its side. This one's up down. So um, I want to get it solved for the squared term. So in this case, pretty straightforward, I'm just going to subtract 8x from both sides. So you might have to do a little bit of manipulation. And it looks like then my 4p value is negative 8. So p is negative 2. So I have a vertex at 0, 0. y squared, so it's on its side. p is negative 2, so it comes back to. Negative 2, 0 would be the point. And there's my parabola. And since that's an 8, this distance right here would be 4. All right, well, that is uh, parabolas. This is the relationship. And, you know, in some of the problems, you might be told where the focus is at. Like the focus is at uh, 0, 5. And um, make the equation from there, something like that. And you can do that. Like from here, you can figure out what the p-value is, right? Because um, if my vertex is at 0, 0, and my focus is at 0, 5, that p-value would be 5. And I can tell that this is going up like that, so it'll be x squared equals, remember it's 4 times p, and then the other equation, so this would be 20y. All right, give those parabola problems a try. Uh, send me any questions, post them, or message me with them.